Welcome to Z Media, Remembering the Stars. In the past few days, the entertainment industry has bid farewell to some of its brightest stars. Join us as we pay tribute to these legendary actors who left an indelible mark on our hearts. We bring you a special report on the life and legacy of a true sports visionary. Pat Williams, co-founder of the Orlando Magic, passed away today at the age of 84. His impact on the world of basketball and beyond cannot be overstated. Williams was more than just a sports executive. He was a dreamer who turned a vision into reality. Over 35 years ago, he and local businessman Jimmy Hewitt embarked on a journey to bring an NBA team to Orlando. On April 22, 1987, that dream became a reality when the NBA Board of Governors granted an expansion franchise to the Magic. And on December 22, 1988, the Magic sold their 10,000 season ticket marking the birth of a new era in Central Florida sports. We wanted to bring magic to Orlando. Armed with optimism and unparalleled energy, we transformed sports marketing and promotions. Central Florida was a fabulous place to live, work, and play. Williams didn't stop there. His career spanned more than 56 years, including 30-plus years with the Orlando Magic and 51 years in the NBA. He served as a general manager for the Chicago Bulls, Atlanta Hawks, and Philadelphia 76ers, playing a pivotal role in bringing an NBA title to Philadelphia in 1983. But Williams wasn't just about basketball. His first love was baseball, and he signed with the Philadelphia Phillies in 1962. From the playing field to the front office, he left an indelible mark on both sports. Williams was a family man, surviving cancer and authoring over 100 books, including The Mission is Remission. His 19 children, 14 of whom were adopted, stood by his side during his recent battle with aggressive viral pneumonia. Tonight, we remember Pat Williams, the man who brought magic to Orlando, forever changing the sports landscape. His legacy lives on, and Central Florida owes him a debt of gratitude. We remember a remarkable literary figure who left an indelible mark on the world of letters. Rosa Reyes, the acclaimed Spanish writer and novelist, passed away on July 17, 2024 at the age of 90. Her legacy is one of resilience, creativity, and unwavering commitment to her craft. Rosa Riguez was born in Barcelona in 1933, during a tumultuous period marked by the Spanish Civil War. Exiled to France as a child, she returned to her homeland after the war, where she pursued her education. Riguez earned a degree in philosophy from the University of Barcelona, rubbing shoulders with influential poets like Jose Agustin Guetasolo and Jane Gill de Biedma. Her literary journey truly began when she joined the legendary publishing house Sex Barrel. There, alongside Carlos Barrel, she championed emerging voices, introducing readers to authors like Juan Benet, Elvaro Pombo, and Javier Marias. Regas's passion for literature led her to establish her own publishing company, La Gaia Ciencia, where she continued to nurture talent. But Rosa Regas was more than a publisher. She was a storyteller. Her debut novel, Memoria de Almater, explored themes of autonomy and self-discovery. It was followed by Azul, a lyrical tale of love and the ocean, which earned her the prestigious Natal Prize in 1994. Regis's wanderlust took her to Syria, where she penned Viaje a la Luz del Cham, a vivid narrative that transported readers to the heart of the Middle East. Her autobiographical work, Luna Lunera, painted a poignant picture of post-war Barcelona, capturing the spirit of resilience that defined her generation. In 2001, Rosa Riguez clinched the 50th edition of the Premio Planeta with La Canchon de Dorothy. This gripping novel unraveled the secret hidden within a country house, intertwining science and intrigue. Beyond her literary pursuits, Riguez was a tireless advocate for human rights. Her articles in newspapers and magazines echoed her commitment to justice and solidarity. She leaves behind a rich legacy, a tapestry of words that will continue to inspire generations to come. Tonight, we honor Rosa Regas, a beacon of creativity, resilience, and compassion. May her words echo through time, reminding us that literature transcends borders and connects us all. We remember a controversial figure in the world of extreme metal, Pinchy Peach. The news of his passing has sent shockwaves through the music community. Pinchy Peach, whose real name was Siriaco Quezada, was a founding member of the band Brugeria. Formed in Los Angeles in 1989, Brugeria blended death metal, grindcore, and groove metal. 
Their lyrics delved into topics like Satanism, anti-Christianity, sex, immigration, narcotic smuggling, and politics. A band that never shied away from controversy. Brugeria portrayed Mexican imagery, with several members being Hispanic and Latino Americans. Their name itself means witchcraft in Spanish. But it wasn't just their music that raised eyebrows. It was their personas. They performed under pseudonyms, concealing their identities due to alleged FBI investigations. In photos, they wore bandanas, balaclavas, and brandished machetes. Controversy followed them from the start. Their debut album, Matando Garros, featured a severed head on the cover, a stark image that became their mascot, known as Coco Loco. That head belonged to a drug dealer, a chilling nod to the band's dark themes. Their impact was immense. Brugeria challenged norms, pushed boundaries, and forced us to confront uncomfortable truths. Pinchy Peach's raw vocals and unapologetic lyrics resonated with fans who felt marginalized. They were more than a band. They were a movement. And their live shows were legendary. Mosh pits, chaos, and a sense of rebellion. Pinchy Peach was the voice of defiance. Absolutely. Whether you loved or hated them, you couldn't ignore Brugeria. They were a lightning rod for controversy, and Pinchy Peach was at the center of it all. As we say goodbye to Pinchy Peach, let's remember the impact he had on music, culture, and our understanding of the darker corners of society. His legacy will live on, even as the band continues without him. We pay tribute to a remarkable artist who left an indelible mark on French literature and music. Beno Duterte, a writer, critic, and host, passed away on July 16, 2024 at the age of 64. Join me as we explore his life, his passions, and the melodies that shaped his legacy. Born in the picturesque town of Le Havre, Benoît Duterte was a man of many talents. His great-grandfather, President René Cody, left an imprint on his heart, a deep tenderness, for a bygone era. As a young boy, Benoît wandered the streets of Le Havre, a city rebuilt after World War II, its classicism echoing in his later works. Music flowed through Benoît's veins. At 16, he immersed himself in modern compositions, from Pierre Boulle's to Giorgi Leggetti. His musicology studies at the University of Rowan fueled his passion. Later, he hosted the radio show Amaze Me Benoît on France Musique, captivating listeners with his eclectic taste from operetta to music hall. Benoît's novels painted vivid landscapes, saw Mille Perdue, Lost Sleep, introduced us to a melancholic young man leaving his hometown for Paris. Le Vaches, the cows, wove childhood memories between Le Havre and the French mountains. His writing, like a nostalgic melody, resonated with readers. In 2001, the prestigious Prix Mattis has honored him. And in 2021, the Académie Française bestowed the Grand Prix de Littérature Henri Gall upon him. Benoît Duterte's literary symphony touched hearts. Bridging past and present, Tonight, we remember Beno Duterte, the writer, the critic, the music lover. His words echo through time, inviting us to dance with nostalgia. As the sun sets on his legacy, let us celebrate the melodies he composed, forever etched in our hearts. We remember a remarkable woman whose voice echoed through the tumultuous decades of the civil rights movement. Bernice Johnson Regan, a co-founder of the Freedom Singers and the driving force behind Sweet Honey in the Rock, has passed away at the age of 81. Her legacy is one of courage, resilience, and unwavering commitment to justice. Born in southwest Georgia, Bernice Johnson Regan was the daughter of a Baptist minister. She found her calling early, using her powerful voice to uplift and inspire. At just 16, she was admitted to Albany State, a historically black public college, where she studied music. Albany, Georgia, would later become a focal point of the civil rights movement, drawing national attention when Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was arrested there in 1962. But it was the songs that mattered most. Freedom songs, often revamped spirituals, became the heartbeat of the movement. Bernice Johnson Regan's voice led those songs whether at marches, in jailhouses, or during mass meetings in African-American churches. She once said, no matter what the article said, they talked about singing. After being kicked out of Albany State due to her activism, Regan co-founded the Freedom Singers, and a cappella group affiliated with the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, SNCC. Their songs chronicled SNCC's activities, from movement leaders' funerals to visits from dignitaries like Kenyan leader Ojinga Odinga. 
Later, Bernice Johnson Regan founded Sweet Honey in the Rock, an African-American vocal ensemble. Their harmonies carried messages of hope, resilience, and unity. Through music, they challenged injustice and celebrated the human spirit. Tonight, Cortland Cox, chairman of the SNCC's Legacy Project, confirms Regan's passing. Her impact extends beyond the notes she sang. It's woven into the fabric of our nation's struggle for equality. As we say goodbye to Bernice Johnson Regan, let us remember her as a song leader, an activist, and a beacon of hope. Her voice may have fallen silent, but its echoes will resonate for generations to come. Thanks for watching and subscribe to our channel. We pay tribute to a true comedy icon. Bob Newhart, the deadpan master of wit, passed away today at the age of 94. His unique style and timeless humor left an indelible mark on the world of entertainment. Bob burst onto the scene in 1960 with the button-down mind of Bob Newhart. His debut comedy album, recorded just months earlier, shot to the top of the charts. Imagine a world where one-sided telephone conversations became the stuff of legend. From Abraham Lincoln's PR man trying to stop him from changing the Gettysburg Address to Walter Raleigh shipping leaves to London Newhart's deadpan delivery made us laugh, think, and appreciate the absurdity of everyday life. But it wasn't just stand-up. Bob's TV series, The Bob Newhart Show, won hearts and awards. As psychologist Bob Hartley, he navigated the complexities of life, therapy sessions, and quirky patients. The show lasted only one season, but its impact was lasting. An Emmy and a Peabody Award. Not bad for a guy who preferred understated gray flannel suits. Bob Newhart's legacy extends beyond the laughs. His calm assurance and subtle satire paved the way for generations of comedians. He was the antithesis of the flashy stereotype thoughtful, courteous, and slightly hesitant. And that's what made him relatable. Whether you're a fan of Newhart or the Bob Newhart show, his influence is undeniable. Tonight, we remember Bob Newhart, a man who turned everyday conversations into comedic gold. His legacy lives on, reminding us to find humor in life's quirks. We remember a true icon of journalism, John of Balmersbach. He passed away on July 17, 2024, leaving behind a legacy that forever shaped the landscape of Phoenix, Arizona. Jana Bombersbach was more than a reporter. She was a force of nature. Her career spanned decades, and her impact on the world of journalism was immeasurable. Let's take a look back at her remarkable journey. Jana began her career at the Arizona Republic, where she quickly became the Star City Hall reporter. Her tenacity and fearlessness earned her respect from colleagues and readers alike. But it was her move to Phoenix New Times that truly solidified her place in history. In 1978, Jana joined the Motley crew at New Times. They were a ragtag group of free-spirited writers and artists, and Jana fit right in. Her feistiness and honesty endeared her to everyone, even the hippies she was rumored to have defected to work with. Jana's final collaboration was with her friend Bob Bose Bell. Their book, Hellrisers and Trailblazers, the Real Women of the Wild West was a labor of love. Despite their Midwestern stubbornness, they created something extraordinary. At a book signing, Jamin declared, I will never, ever do another book with Bob. Little did she know how right she was. Jana Bombersbach's instincts were spot on. She elevated new times with hard news credentials, leaving an indelible mark. Tonight, we honor her legacy, her fiery spirit, and her unwavering commitment to truth. We remember a true legend of the silver screen, Chang Pai Pi, who passed away today at the age of 78. Chang Pai Pei was a trailblazer, a pioneer in martial arts cinema. Born in Shanghai in 1946, she moved to Hong Kong at the age of 16, where her career took flight. Her breakout role came in the 1966 film, Come Drink With Me, directed by King Hu. As Golden Swallow, she captivated audiences with her grace, skill, and fierce determination. But it was her role as Jade Fox in Ang Lee's Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon that truly solidified her legacy. Released in 2000, the film became a global sensation, grossing over $128 million in North America alone. Chen's performance was nothing short of mesmerizing a villainess, with depth, cunning, and a lethal mastery of martial arts. Chang's family shared that she had been privately battling a neurodegenerative brain disease since 2019. Despite the challenges, she remained resilient, donating her brain for medical research. Her daughters and son remember her as the Queen of Martial Arts, an award-winning actress whose career spanned six decades. 
Michelle Yeoh, her co-star in Crouching Tiger, expressed her grief on Instagram. Shane Pipe was not just an actress, she was a force of nature. Her legacy will continue to inspire generations. Tonight, we say farewell to Chang Pai Pei as cinematic icon, a fierce warrior, and a beloved soul. May her memory live on, forever etched in the annals of film history. We remember a true icon of the airwaves, Ron E. Sparks, the renowned Australian radio presenter whose velvety voice graced our radios for decades, has passed away at the age of 72. And this is a special tribute to a man who became synonymous with the very essence of radio. Raw E. Sparks, also known as Sparks, began his illustrious career in the 1970s at top rating station 2 SM. His voice was a comforting presence in countless households across Australia. From Triple M to 2 Day FM and later WSFM, Ron's dulcet tones connected us all. I remember tuning in to Ron's morning show during my own early days in journalism. His wit, warmth, and encyclopedic knowledge of music made every broadcast a joy. Whether it was spinning classic hits or sharing heartwarming stories, Ron E. Sparks was more than a radio host. He was a friend. Ron was a legend of the airwaves. His passion for music was infectious. We'd sit in the studio, and he'd weave these magical playlists, each song carefully chosen, like brushstrokes on a canvas. And that voice, it was like honey poured over velvet. Ron could make even the most mundane news sound poetic. He had this way of drawing you in, making you feel like you were part of the conversation. Ron E. Sparks wasn't just a radio personality. He was a cultural touchstone. He guest-hosted Countdown on the ABC, and his voice graced the once popular gang show, Wheel of Fortune. His impact extended beyond the airwaves. Ron was the best. Ten years we spent together, and not a single dull moment. His kindness encouragement I owe so much to him. A legend of radio broadcasting, indeed. Vale, Ron. Ron kept his cancer battle, a tightly held secret, for 15 years. A talented radio host, a fine man. We became neighbors, forged a strong friendship. His mind sharp as ever. And that gentle character unforgettable. Tonight, as we dim the studio lights, we honor Ron E. Sparks. His legacy lives on through the countless memories he gifted us. So, Wherever you are, turn up the volume, close your eyes, and let Ron's voice carry you back to those golden days of radio. We remember a beloved figure from our childhoods, Benja Gregory, the child actor who brought Brian Tanner to life on the iconic 1980s sitcom ALF, has tragically passed away at the age of 46. His bright-eyed smile and endearing portrayal of Brian touched the hearts of millions. Tonight, we honor his memory. Benji Gregory was more than just a child star. He was a part of our family. From 1986 to 1990, we welcomed him into our living rooms as Brian Tanner, the young boy who discovered an alien named ALF crash landed in his garage. Their adventures taught us about friendship, acceptance, and the power of laughter. I had the privilege of speaking with Benji's sister, Rebecca Hertzberg Faffinger. She shared with me the heartbreaking details of his passing. Benji fell asleep in his car on June 13, parked in a Chase Bank lot in Peoria, Arizona. His service dog, Hans, was by his side. The scorching Arizona heatwave claimed their lives, and we mourned their loss. Born Benjamin Gregory Hertzberg in Encino, California, on May 26, 1978, Benji grew up on camera. Commercials, guest appearances on shows like The A-Team and The Twilight Zone, and even movies like Jumpin' Jack Flash and Never Forget showcased his talent. But it was ALF that made him a household name. Our social media feeds have been flooded with memories from fans who remember Benji's infectious laughter and genuine spirit. He was more than just a character. He was a friend. And tonight we celebrate his legacy. As we say goodbye to Benji Gregory, let's remember the joy he brought into our lives. His sister shared that going through his belongings... She alternated between laughter and tears. Benji's videos and notes captured his essence, the same essence that touched us all. Benji, you may have left this world too soon, but your light will continue to shine. To our viewers, remember the name Benji Gregory, a star who graced our screens, warmed our hearts, and left an indelible mark. Rest in peace, dear friend. We remember a Hollywood icon, Shannon Doherty, who passed away at the age of 53 after a long battle with cancer. Let's take a closer look at her remarkable life and career. 
Shannon Doherty burst onto the scene as Brenda Walsh in the original Beverly Hills, 90,210. The show wasn't just about glitz and glamour. It tackled real-life issues that resonated with viewers worldwide. Doherty's portrayal of Brenda made her relatable a self-proclaimed badass who navigated the complexities of adolescence. But behind the scenes, Doherty's fiery spirit sometimes clashed with co-stars. Reports of heated feuds circulated, but as time passed, she and Jenny Garth became close friends. Doherty once said, Maybe my career would have taken a different direction if I'd been wiser and older. Still, her impact was undeniable. In the cult classic film Heathers, Doherty played Heather Duke, a member of the high school clique. Her talent shone alongside Winona Ryder, Lizanne Falk, and Kim Walker. And when a rebooted Heathers TV series emerged, Doherty returned as a mother in the new generation. Shannon's journey extended beyond the screen. She authored Badass, a semi-autobiographical book encouraging young women to find their inner strength. Her legacy lives on, inspiring countless fans. Tonight, we honor Shannon Doherty, a true Hollywood badass who left an indelible mark. May she rest in peace. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to our channel, Media Talks.